Hi guys, this is Julie from Famecanic Designs. I purchased some perserites from Ontario and they were kind of crumbling, but I think it's the nature of this uh, specific stone. And I decided that I wanted to stabilize it and try to make beautiful cams with it because it's a um, fish scale type of uh, peristorite. It's really beautiful. I purchased Opticon and I watched a lot of videos. I mixed my knowledge of uh, visual arts and also experience with different resins and casting techniques and everything that has to do with vacuum chambers. I saw a lot of people not satisfied with the step-by-step um, -step process uh, that they were following with the Opticon, so I tried to put my twist on it and modify the way to do it just to see if it would uh, be successful. So now I'm just waiting a few minutes and I don't know yet if it's gonna look great. Let's do the steps together. Opticon 224, nitrile gloves, pans, funnels, plastic containers, tin foil, either a brush or silicone spatula, covered metal trays, acetone, glass trays, safety gear, the stones that I will be attempting to stabilize are peristerites, Spencer opal, and Canadian red tourmalines. The first step will be to clean your stones. If you have oil residue on them, you need to remove it with an industrial cleaner. My stones were oil-free, so I soaked them in acetone for about 20 minutes. If your acetone is not uh, too dirty, you can put it back in your container. And afterwards, I put them on a tray on uh, a heating surface at about 150 degrees. When it stopped steaming, it was dry. To make sure it dries well, flip them around at least one time. After that, they're gonna be ready to soak in Opticon. Find a plastic or a metal container to put them inside. Put them flat side by side and fill the Opticon up to the top of the stones. You only need to use the resin, no hardener at this point. I put it on a, a heating plate just because I want the resin to flow well inside the stones. And don't forget to ventilate. The best way to do it is of course being outdoors, but it's winter here, there's still snow and it's too cold to be outside and it's not good for the resin. I left it there for maybe 30 to 40 minutes and then I put it in my vacuum chamber. Next time I'm gonna buy a heating pad and I'm gonna leave the heating underneath. Um, so next I did two rounds of 15 minutes of vacuuming. I thought that removing the air and reintroducing the air twice will bring more resin into the stones. Next time, I'm gonna do 30 minutes each round. When I'm hitting the mat, it's because when there's a lot of bubbles and you don't want it to overflow, if you hit it, it's gonna create a um, vibration and it's gonna help popping the bubbles. You don't see it, but I'm wearing a full face mask just to prevent my lungs from breathing all that toxic uh, resin. Have you stabilized stones before? If so, in the comment section for everyone, leave your process. If you've used cactus juice, regular epoxy, which one is your favorite and why? Between the two rounds of vacuuming, I flipped the stones upside down.
There's not as many bubbles, but there are still some. And I'm sure if I left it an hour more, there would still gonna be bubbles. I finished this step and up to the next, so I'm taking all the rocks, put them in a tray and then the extra opticon will be reused next time so I'm putting it back in its uh, container after I'm gonna wipe the stones to remove the excess resin so I can do another mix of resin and hardener The next uh, mix will be 8 part Opticon, 1 part Hardener. Usually the steps to follow is when you have wiped your rocks, you just do the mix of Opticon and Hardener and you brush it over your stone and you either put it in the uh, oven or um, you just let it dry. But I think that it might not be the best technique because some people were saying that it was still being gooey inside because obviously if you don't bring in the hardener, it's just gonna get hard on the outside, cure on the outside. So what I'm gonna try next is to do two rounds of a vacuum chamber with the hardener and I'm gonna put more resin than what people do i know it's gonna create a bit more waste of product but at least it's gonna work well i hope so <laughs> from what i remember you either use plastic or wood to mix your resin and hardener i mix it thoroughly because you still have a lot of time for before it cures you put them in your little tray side by side I didn't want to put too much um, resin and hardener so I'm just brushing it over but at least it's gonna be halfway soaked in there I did 5 to 10 minutes each round in between I turned them over It's best if you use thin slabs because then you'll be sure that the resin will go in up to the center of the stone. I'm gonna remove a bit of the product but still gonna leave some on there and um, I leave it on a hot surface for maybe 20 minutes next time I want to put the heating for a bit more time and after that I just closed it and came back the next day after 12 hours to see what happened Since I had a lot of extra resin premixed with the hardener, I thought that I would take two peristerite stones and vacuum them twice 5 minutes. Doing this experiment by skipping the previous step of just soaking it in resin, I wanted to see if it would still work and stabilize the stone. We are the next morning, 12 hours have passed. The stones are just a bit sticky, so I think I'm gonna put a bit of heat to speed the process. Let's have a look. So I just turned on this uh, heating um, device. So they don't feel that sticky. 
some of them yes and some of them no I try to uh, remove them and uh, switch the side upside down now I've turned it off and I'm gonna wait uh, 30 minutes to check on them good news after 20 minutes on the heater at about 150 to 180 degrees on the other side and uh, after an hour of uh, cooling down they don't feel that sticky to me let's see no if i push my nail in nothing happens so hopefully there's not going to be too many cracks inclusions So let's go try to slice something and cap something and find out. Hello. <laughs> so this one, I did the whole process. I'm going to cut it for you today. This piece went through the whole process, but this second one only had the last process done with the hardener. I will be cutting two cabochons. The one that went through the whole process is going to be the triangle and the oval one just went through the last process. Alongside the peristerite, I also stabilized the opals and tourmalines. I think that the tourmaline were okay, but they need a bit more time in the vacuum because they're kind of fibrous. Here I'm showing you the bottom was not stabilized and the top, yes. I was really excited to try to cap them to see if they would be strong and withstand the pressure. I'm super happy because they were so easy to cut. I even dropped them a few times just before I started to set them in silver and they didn't break. I'm going to show you little clips of me shaping the stone, but if you want, skip until um, the end of the process for the reveal. The first cabochon I'm going to cut is the one that went through all the stabilizing steps. And now I'm cutting an oval and this will be the one that only went through the last process uh, two times in the vacuum chamber with the hardener already in. The only part that I added after the um, 3000 grit is some uh, cerium oxide. You're gonna see at the end it's gonna shine well. But my problem is that it undercut a bit so maybe i need another type of um, pad to put my um, cerium now you're gonna see me compare this one with one that was unstabilized and broke when i capped it here at the bottom you see that they are stabilized because they are darker and they have a blue hue to them i will be stabilizing more and cutting more and more each day and if you want to have a few of these rocks, unstabilized, natural, you can purchase them with the link that I'm going to include in the description below. I'm happy to say that both stones stabilized really well, even if the oval one only went through the last process with the hardener. 
To conclude, the stabilization worked well for the peristerite, but I think for other stones, I would need to leave it longer in the resin and in the vacuum chamber. So stay tuned because in a week or so, I'm gonna do a second part with my newfound knowledge and improved techniques. I will also do a video about peristerite, from unboxing to jewelry making, and at the end I'm gonna reveal a small collection with peristerites. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed discovering Canadian stones with me. See you next time for another video about jewelry and lapidary work. Take care!